Good morning, everyone. Uh, Brad Bassett, Application Engineer at AEE Solar, and I'm going to be talking about the PV system rapid shutdown options uh, that are available uh, to meet the code, and uh, we will get started. So <clears throat> what is the rapid shutdown requirement? Uh, NEC 2014 came up with a new section 690.12, uh, rapid shutdown of PV systems on buildings, <clears throat> which basically says that uh, if you have a PV system that's on or in a building, uh, and it specifies a certain number of feet on the building or a certain number of feet away from the solar array, uh, those conductors uh, will need to be able to be controlled so that they are less than 30 volts and 240 volt amps, which is basically watts, uh, within 10 seconds of the initiation of the shutdown. Uh, this is really uh, an issue uh, for fire safety uh, so that uh, a firefighter that needs to go on the roof of a building or on a building uh, can be assured that, you know, uh, outside of 10 feet away from the solar array, uh, there is no, you know, damage, injurious voltage uh, or current in the conductors if they happen to break into them. And that is between any of the two conductors or any of the, either the conductor to the ground. And if there's subarrays separated by more than 10 feet, uh, then you would have conductors between them that would be more than 10 feet away from the array, and, and so each subarray would have to be separately controlled. Uh, although you would want to have those controlled from the same initiation. Uh, either a switch or loss of AC power, um, but they would have to be have their own control on the roof. And of course, the equipment must be listed and identified and labeled per 690.56. Uh, that's both B and C, actually. And 690.56C, actually, is the one that says that it needs to have this uh, little label that says photovoltaic system equipped with rapid shutdown. And 690.56B just says that you need to have uh, placards that say where the shutdown is for the system at, at various points. Okay, there's another part of the um, code that, that is new for 2014 that um, applies to the same equipment that we're, we're looking at for the rapid shutdown. Uh, and that's 690.15C, uh, which says that a DC combiner on a roof must have a load break disconnecting means uh, within six feet of the combiner. And uh, the combiners with circuit breakers probably meet this requirement, um, although some inspectors may have want to see a, a visible uh, disconnect uh, actuator on the outside of the of the of the combiner, uh, it's not clear in the in the code which way. Um, if you have fuses in the combiner, then you would act; those would not be load break. Uh, so you would actually have to have a disconnect or um, you know a disconnecting combiner uh, if you have fuses in the combiner. Now, as the code is written, uh, a pass through box is not a combiner. It does not combine any circuits, and so would not be uh, applicable under this uh, code section, um, although some inspectors may say, well, just because you're not combining, it still serves this, a similar purpose. Uh, that would just be an interpretation, but uh, the way the code is written, uh, you would not need to disconnect on a pass-through box. And quite often a pass-through box is just, you know, a J box under the array, uh, so it would be pretty hard to get to anyway. <clears throat> and there's combiners, both the Outback ICS Plus uh, and the uh, Midnight MNPV Disco series of co combiners uh, do have uh, an external disconnect uh, like this that would meet that. And there'll be, we'll, I'll get into some of the um, rapid shutdown boxes and, and whether they do or do not have, you know, a disconnect uh, on them uh, will make a difference. So where does the 2014 code apply? Uh, it's 
pretty much a lot of the states now uh, is in effect. Uh, it isn't necessarily completely in effect. I am not uh, familiar with all, most of the states, but I, being in Washington State myself, I am familiar with what's going on here. And there may be other states that have similar deals where they are still not enforcing uh, the rapid shutdown in Washington State in some areas, although they've been using the 2014 code since July of 2014, but they have specifically said the rapid shutdown is not applicable. Uh, and in, in some areas they are now, but there's still some areas where they're not. So in, in your state, you, they may have a similar deal where they may not be enforcing that yet, or they may be. And there also may be areas, local areas, uh, like I think there's um, a few couple of areas in California where they are starting to enforce this. Uh, even though the state itself is not on the 2014 code. Uh, here's a, just a picture of a, a roof area. <clears throat> um, and the code uh, says that uh, an area within 10 feet of the solar array is not controlled. The area outside of the 10 feet from the solar array is controlled. So the two conductors uh, on the left there are controlled conductors. Uh, the area within the shaded um, space uh, is not controlled, at least not with the 2014 code. And so, so long as those two subarrays are not more than 10 feet from each other, uh, this is all one area uh, that only requires one rapid shutdown device on it. If those two subarrays were more than 10 feet apart, then you would have to have a, a rapid shutdown device on each subarray. And of course, those conductors need to be controlled all the way to where they go into a, an inverter, charge controller, or power center. <clears throat> um, an inverter, a good tie inverter, uh, generally has lots of capacitors in it, as you can see in the picture there. And those capacitors will keep that circuit uh, above the rapid shutdown requirement uh, for longer than the 10 seconds. Uh, so there has to be some way of either discharging those capacitors or disconnecting the circuit from those capacitors. Uh, most of the simple grid tie rapid shutdown devices uh, will actually have a, a capacitor discharge circuit in it uh, that will just simply bleed the voltage to ground uh, from those capacitors uh, so that it will uh, meet, the, meet the code. On uh, battery systems, uh, you know, where you have a charge controller that you're feeding into, that does not uh, necessarily work. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to that section. Uh, there are some uh, solutions that are inherently compliant. Um, module level power electronics, uh, microinverters, certainly uh, if, when you turn off the AC circuit, that is being fed by the microinverters that automatically makes all those circuits dead. Um, you'll still have DC, but it's within the array. Uh, so that is inherently compliant without any further pieces of equipment. Uh, the solar edge inverters uh, and optimizers are rapid shutdown compliant. Uh, at first, they had to have a, a, a capacitor bleed off uh, in the added to the inverter, uh, but in the, at least in the single phase inverters, that is now standard, and you no longer have to add anything to it. Um, some of the three phase solar edge inverters still do require a, a capacitor discharge retrofit. That's a little inexpensive capacitor I mean, resistor that gets installed in the inverter, and at some point soon, that will all be standard also in three phase inverters. Uh, the solar edge system, when you turn off the inverter or take off the AC to the inverter, uh, it will automatically shut down the uh, DC circuits uh, to all the capacitors, all the uh, optimizers, and uh, they've done that from the beginning. Uh, it was only the capacitor discharge that they had to add something to. If your string inverter is located within the 10 feet of the array, uh, it's basically the same situation as a microinverter then, and when you turn off the AC to the um, inverters, it, it automatically makes that line dead, um, you know, outside of the array, 
array. So as long as your string inverters are located within 10 feet of the array, um, then they are compliant. And in commercial systems on flat roofs, uh, you'll see it's fairly common now to have your string inverters on a rack uh, next to your solar array, uh, just so that it meets that, that um, requirement. AET makes a, an inverter rack and SMA makes their own inverter rack and I'm sure there are others. Uh, getting into some of the specific uh, inverters that uh, we sell that you're likely to see. <clears throat> um, most of the grid touch string inverter companies now make their own rapid shutdown devices uh, that are compatible with their inverters. Uh, the Fronius rapid shutdown system uh, has uh, two separate, two different boxes available. Uh, they're NEMA 4X 600 volt DC uh, boxes. Uh, there's no additional power supply needed for them. Uh, they're triggered on the absence of AC power or a remote switch. And a lot of these, that remote switch just simply consists of a switch in the AC power to the system or in the DC power up to the rapid shutdown device. Um, and those uh, switches can be, you know, a, a remote um, emergency shutoff switch, uh, which is a fairly common item, uh, easily available for a low cost. And uh, that way it's, you know, generally a big red button or something that makes it obvious that that's what that is. And in the Fronius, you have two uh, small conductors between the inverter and the rapid shutdown box, box, and it can be in the solar array conduit so long as those conductors are rated for the same voltage as the conductors. Generally, you know, 600 volt wire will work fine for that. And the PV connections in these uh, are in terminals inside the box sort of what you would expect from a common combiner box would be similar. Uh, so they have a, a single string box where you have one input, one output. Uh, and there's no manual DC disconnect on that box because it's not a combiner. If there's only one string going in, one string going out, it's basically a pass-through box and does not need that manual DC disconnect on it. The multi-string box uh, can have I mean, you can use it for just one input-output. Um, you can use it sometimes for two output, two inputs into one output. Most commonly, you'll probably use it with two strings going in and two strings going out to two separate MPPT channels in the inverter, being as how that's very common now. And uh, so it is possible uh, to put two strings into each of these inputs into each channel but it is limited to 20 amps uh, circuit rating, uh, which means that you're really limited to an 8 amp short circuit current on your solar array, on your string, uh, in order to put two strings into the, each channel. Uh, this is, seems to be a fairly common uh, situation with a lot of rapid shutdown boxes. Uh, there's some sort of inherent 20 amp uh, device somewhere that people are using. And if you take the 8 amps short circuit current and multiply it times the 1.25 that code requires for the circuit rating um, and then put two strings of that together, you end up at 20 amps. Uh, so really only smaller, you know, lower power modules are going to work with two strings. Uh, I don't know, 8 amp short circuit current on a module is about a 230 watt module or something like that. So really they should be, for the most part anymore, should be thought of as, as single string input, single output to each channel. Uh, this one, because it does have the possibility of combining two strings, it does have the manual DC disconnect on the box. And uh, this will vary between different devices. This particular device, uh, the, the Fronius device, you can have five of these uh, rapid shutdown devices uh, on each inverter, you know, daisy chained together. So you can use it for a fairly large array. 
Okay, SMA. SMA now has their own rapid shutdown device also. And it is uh, same deal, one to four inputs, one to two outputs. Uh, so basically you have two channels. Uh, you can use one or two strings into each channel. Um, in this case, you can go up to 8.96 amps short circuit current on each string. Uh, which again is probably only about a 250 watt module, um, so you do have to watch that. Uh, there is no manual DC disconnect on this box, uh, so if you're going to combine strings, that may be an issue. Uh, for the most part, you're going to be looking at uh, using this with two strings in and, and two channels out. Uh, in this case, you can put 16 of these boxes in one system, daisy chained, wired together, uh, which means it's fairly flexible for a fairly good sized system. Uh, it does have MC4 inputs on it, and so when you're assembling an array, you'll have to use a jumper that goes from the connectors on the modules uh, to MC4 connectors that connect to the rapid shutdown box. And uh, instead of buying a standard length PV output cable and cutting it to length, you'll have to probably in the field install the MC4 uh, cables unless you have a fairly standard array layout that you use. And the unused MC4 connectors uh, must be capped. And I believe that this uh, rapid shutdown device comes with the caps so that uh, you don't have to buy, buy them separately. Uh, the five conductors are needed for running this switch, um, and it does have a remote shutdown switch box uh, actuator, um, and um, that is necessary to some extent in the SMA system because they have the secure power supply, which can supply power uh, while there's a power outage. And of course, if your array shuts down, that wouldn't work. Uh, you know, when the power goes. Out. So they have a, a separate actuator that is that you use to initiate the shutdown on these uh, devices. And so there's five conductors from that device up to uh, the rapid shutdown boxes, and that can be you know 18 or 16 gauge outdoor rated or in the conduit because it is a DC um, circuit. And this device also is rated for 600 volt DC arrays. Now, if you have one of the newer uh, SMA inverters that have three channels in them, uh, it would take two of these boxes in order to have a rapid shutdown on all three channels. ABB, uh, ABB has a few choices here. Um, NEMA 4X and with terminals inside the box, so there's, you don't have the MC4 connectors on this one. And each input is rated at up to 10 amps operational and 11.25 amps short circuit current. So this is applicable for multiple strings um, into and that can be combined and using even the most modern, you know, modules up to 300 or 320 watts or or even maybe a little larger than that. Um, there is a 24 volt power supply that comes with these systems uh, with the kits and it gets installed inside the inverter disconnect box. You have to take out a couple of terminals and put in this power supply and then that power supply uh, runs uses conductors that go up to the various rapid shutdown boxes or pass-through boxes. When the AC power is disconnected, it will turn off that power supply, which then turns off the DC power to the boxes and initiates the rapid shutdown. Or you can put in uh, an optional remote switch in that, either in the AC to that power supply or in the DC from that power supply to the rapid shutdown boxes. So there's two conductors between the inverter and the rapid shutdown box. It's DC, so it can be in the array conduit, uh, so long, but you do have to watch and make sure that you do not exceed the uh, fill 
you know, the wire fill in that conduit, and you do have to count these conductors for that, uh, I believe. So ABB makes um, a pass-through kit, which has two inputs and two outputs. Uh, so it would be for a two-string into a dual MPPT inverter. Uh, there's no manual DC disconnect on that box because it is a pass-through box and not a combiner. Uh, they also make a two-string combiner kit and a four-string combiner kit. So two inputs, two outputs. Uh, actually, the two-string combiner is two inputs and one output for a single MPPT, and the four-string combiner is four inputs and two outputs uh, for dual MPPT. So they're pretty flexible and pretty much cover your uh, options there. Uh, the Jinlong Solus uh, system has a small box that mounts to your rail, similar to a, an optimizer or a microinverter, um, NEMA 4X, of course, and has MC4 pigtails on it uh, for your connections to your solar array. Uh, this one's a little different in that it actually you just run the 120 volt power up to the uh, rapid shutdown device uh, instead of having a power supply that runs DC power up to there. Uh, it actually has the uh, DC conversion in this in the box itself. Uh, now the AC conductors between the inverter and the rapid shutdown box uh, could probably not be in the same array as the DC array conduit. Um, this is it's not completely clear under the code uh, if you can or not um, you know you're not supposed to mix con uh, conductors from different de devices uh, there's one point in the code I was reading where it says you can have the inverter output and the input on in the same conduit and there's another spot in the code right nearby where it says you cannot so it's a little sort of unclear on that um, you may have to run a separate wire or a separate conduit up to up to this box uh, for the AC power to power the unit. Uh, they make a one-string box, uh, one input, one output, so that would be a pass-through box, and, and then they have a two-string box with two inputs and two outputs, two inputs, two outputs. Um, both of these would be considered pass-through boxes. There's no combining of strings, so. Uh, no DC disconnect is, is required on those. Okay, <clears throat> a th third party device, it's actually been around a little longer than most of those others, uh, is the Innovative Solar uh, uh, Rapid Shutdown Devices. And uh, they're in working with uh, Solodeck on these, and so it's available in the Solodeck box or as a separate uh, poly box or in some cases a steel box and uh, works with most all grid tie inverters using a single box at each array uh, NEMA 4X uh, and the Solodex which I believe the Solodex is rated at NEMA 3R and they have an option for four or eight DC strings uh, the, Sol the Solodex is, is four strings and those are mostly would be considered pass-through. Uh, there is a provision and then there's enough terminals in these for combining two strings. But again, it's got a 20 amp rating and so you would have to have uh, strings that were rated at eight amps short circuit current or less uh, in order to combine two strings into one channel. Uh, there's no manual DC disconnect on these so that that would also, if you read the code uh, in a certain way, would mean that you cannot combine two strings also. Uh, but that would be subject to, uh, you know, interpretation by your uh, inspector. Uh, you can reset this system uh, from the ground level, uh, as I believe most of the other systems that I have so far presented are also able to be reset from the ground level. Uh, there is a transformer or a little power supply installed, powered from the uh, inverter, probably, or somewhere, uh, so that when that um, 
power goes away uh, or you have a switch that takes that power away, it will uh, then initiate the rapid shutdown. And the wire to run this to signal it, um, so long as it's got the adequate voltage uh, rating, can be put in the same conduit as the array output cables. You can have the separate uh, e-stop button uh, or just have the actuation on, lack, on the absence of the AC power. Uh, Innovative also has a 1000 volt DC solution available. It uh, does not have the capacitor bleed down, um, but what I've been hearing or what I've been told is that the 1000 volt inverters tend to not need that capacitor bleed down, that they actually do um, bleed down that uh, on their own. Um, you might have to check with each inverter manufacturer just to confirm that. Um, I have not had a chance to do that yet. Okay. If you have an AC coupled system with batteries, um, pretty much I think that the rapid shutdown system that would be used for the grid tie inverter would probably be adequate for the entire system. Um, nobody's really looked into that. It's certainly not anything in the code that says anything about that. Uh, in a DC coupled system, uh, that is what we are going to go into now. Um, you do need the rapid shutdown between the array and the charge controller inverter input. Uh, they do not specify you know, exactly where the other end of that circuit is, uh, but we could probably pretty much assume that it's going to be at your array input breaker into the charge controller. Um, and I think that's what all the manufacturers are assuming also. Uh, now because um, a battery system is meant to continue to operate during a power outage, um, you don't want to initiate rapid shutdown when the AC power goes away. Uh, that would not uh, be what you what your customer would be looking for, obviously. And so all of these systems would need a manual stop switch uh, to initiate the shutdown. Uh, as opposed to the grid tie inverters, the capacitor discharge circuit might not work with charge controllers. Um, I've been told that uh, if you discharge the capacitors in a charge controller uh, that since it's still connected to the battery, it still has power from that direction, it just simply recharges them. Uh, so in order to discharge those, you'd have to have a continuous discharge on them, uh, which one, may not discharge it adequately, and two, would probably eventually overheat because you'd be trying to discharge too much current over continuing time. Uh, some of them may work. Um, some of the high voltage charge controllers might work. Uh, it hasn't been really tested for sure yet. Uh, we'll probably have more information on that, uh, you know, as we as we get into this farther. Uh, so what do they do? Um, what you have to do then, of course, is put a disconnect at the uh, combiner as you normally would in a rapid shutdown device, and then you also have to have a disconnection means at the charge controller or at the array input uh, to the power supply, to the power panel. And the two systems that are commonly used for this uh, will have a remote operated breaker um, for uh, you know the, the lower voltage arrays minus the less than 150 volt arrays or the 300 volt arrays. Um, can be a remote operated breaker um, that's actuated from the same initiation device as the rapid shutdown device on the roof, the combiner on the roof, and will disconnect the circuit from both ends in order to make that circuit uh, uh, meet the requirements. And if you have a greater than 300 volt or 150 volt array, depending on which system you're using, um, you may actually have to have another rapid shutdown box similar to the one at the array um, at the charge controller um, in order to make that disconnect. Okay, um, your AHJ or inspectors have of course a lot of leeway. 
and will make various interpretations of the code. And the code is not very specific in a lot of issues uh, with battery-based systems. So uh, there have been some people in the industry that says, you know, your battery cables are part of the system, battery part of your photovoltaic system and, and are applicable in this. Uh, I don't know that all inspectors are going to agree with that. Uh, certainly some manufacturers don't agree with that. Um, so, and then, you know, at what, what length of battery cables falls into this, and that's another interpretation. The, there is a section of the 2014 code that says you have to have a disconnect at both ends of a battery circuit that's more than five feet long. Now, does that mean that your rapid shutdown is required for that? Does it, does it mean your rapid shutdown is not required if it's less than five feet? It's, it's all subject to interpretation. What you can do, uh, and will probably meet the uh, intent of the code, uh, certainly it will impress your inspector, if you simply connect the remote shutdown on the inverter to the initiation device. Both uh, of the initiation devices from Outback and Midnight have an auxiliary contact on it that you can simply wire to your remote shutoff terminals in your inverters. And so when that initiation device is pushed, it will close the contact or open the contact, depending on what's required by the inverter, and it will shut down the inverter. Uh, that will shut down your AC power to the house and uh, really is probably meets the effect of the code uh, quite effectively. Um, and doesn't have the potential, you know, if you suddenly have a heavily loaded inverter disconnecting it from the battery of, of the potential for damaging the inverter. Um, and I don't know if that's true anymore, but it used to be true that if you disconnected your inverter from the battery, it would damage it. Um, some of the more modern inverters, that may not be true, and it may also depend on how heavily loaded it is at the time you disconnect it. But it certainly, uh, is everybody's fine with uh, operating it with the remote shutoff in the inverter uh, as far as operationally. If, you, if your inspector does require that you have a remote operated, I mean that you disconnect the battery circuit uh, at the same time that you initiate rapid shutdown, there are um, remote operated you know, 175 amp and 250 amp circuit breakers uh, available from midnight for that uh, purpose. Uh, and they also have a little power supply that you have to put in the system uh, in order to power those breakers. Uh, so that is possible if it is required. Uh, also, there's a possibility that you have an engine generator running uh, powering the system. Uh, you can, if the if you have the remote shutoff actuated in the inverter, uh, it very is likely that it may shut off the generator also before it shuts itself down if it is the one that has initiated the generator running. Uh, if the generator is, is turned on manually outside of the inverter controls, then you may have to control that separately. Um, there may be the possibility that you can use that same auxiliary to shut down the inverter also, I mean the generator also, um, or you can use a remote operated circuit breaker in the rapid shutdown system uh, that will just simply open the circuit from the generator. This is sort of a not well researched uh, issue. Um, although Midnight has had this available for since they had the rapid shutdown, so they obviously thought about it. Okay, uh, getting into a specific system here, uh, we have the Outback uh, ICS Plus system, which should be shipping pretty shortly now, and uh, we, it can be ordered. And they include not only rapid shutdown functions, but also arc fault circuit interruption functions uh, that is listed to UL1699B. As far as I know, it is the only system made for battery systems that is listed under the UL1699B arc fault UL listing. And 
uh, it's how Outback is going to deal with their arc fault uh, interruption uh, requirements. And that arc fault and the rapid shutdown is in the combiner box. Uh, it's not in the charge controller. So, uh, you know, that, that is probably a, uh, a good thing that it's closer to the uh, array rather than near the power electronics where it can affect things. So the Outback uh, combiners are NEMA 3R rated, uh, but as with both them and uh, other combiners that are made for these systems, uh, they are NEMA 3R rated for a sloped roof. Uh, most of the 3R assist, uh, rated boxes are made to be vertical only, uh, you know, like square D disconnects and the like. Uh, but these combiners are rated for a sloped roof, uh, generally down to about a 3 and 12 pitch, which is about 14 degrees tilt. They are all aluminum construction, and uh, the reset uh, can be done by the um, rapid shutdown interface or the, the emergency stop button um, at the ground level. Uh, when that is reset, it resets the combiner. And Outback has put this together as a whole kit, and they have three different kits. The ICS plus one for a single combiner and a single charge controller. The ICS plus two for two combiners and two charge controllers. And of course the ICS plus four is for four combiners and four charge controllers, or three. And some of the parts in the Outback ICS plus system. Uh, of course you have the combiner box, uh, which has a DC load brake disconnect in it. Um, it has fuses for six strings, uh, which covers most all the arrays that uh, would normally be installed in a new system at this point. And it uses uh, four conductors, wire to the combiner from the uh, power supply in the uh, system. And if those are rated for the same voltage and temperature, they can share the um, PV array output conduit. Uh, again, assuming that you have, you know, do not exceed the uh, fill ratio uh, of that conduit. Uh, the rapid shutdown interface is basically the shutdown box, and it is um, outdoor rated for a vertical surface, and just it simply has a switch on it uh, that turns it on and off and also has uh, LEDs that tell you if you have an arc fault um, or if you have initiated rapid shutdown. And it also has the auxiliary that can be used to trip the remote on off switch in the inverters. And then the other part of this is they have a DC power supply, they call it the breaker control DC and it simply has uh, supplies the DC power to the initiation device and the combiner boxes. And uh, it has both a 24 volt or a 48 volt DC input uh, for the same unit, either 24 or 48 volt input. And it, it mounts inside your system DC enclosure. Uh, I believe it, it actually mounts in a panel mount breaker space uh, but it can also be panel mounted or just mounted inside the, the box somewhere. They have a little bracket that comes with it. It can power up to six of the combiners uh, from each one of these power supplies or two of the relay trip breakers. And the relay trip breakers are what you install instead of the array input breaker in the DC box um, in the system. You know, near uh, between the solar array c conductors and the charge controller, and this is also powered by the rapid shutdown initiator, and will disconnect the circuit at the power center end of the circuit, and that is uh, rated at, at 300 volts DC and 75 amps, uh, either a one pole, two pole, or four pole unit. Uh, depending on whether you have one, two, or four, three or four charge control circuits uh, with a combiner on each. Uh, 
Uh, Midnight has been doing this longer than most of the others, so they have a, a pretty robust, flexible system and a variety of options. Uh, their, their rapid shutdown system can be used actually for grid tie inverters or for battery systems. And it is uh, basically a disconnect or a combiner box at the array. And there's a large choice of combiners uh, that can be used for this or actually just disconnect boxes. They're SOBs, shut off boxes, and various voltages uh, available for those. Uh, they're mostly, uh, mostly 600 volt um, rated boxes. Uh, then they have the birdhouse, which is the initiation device, and it's basically just a switch uh, with some circuitry in it that, that tells things, people tells the boxes what to do and gives you feedback um, on um, what the system is doing. And the actuation uh, initiation uh, is triggered through a uh, special Cat5 uh, USE2 rated cable. That's a five conductor, um, 600 volt outdoor rated cable. Um, that's apparently not something that's easy to find, so Midnight is offering it themselves. And at the end, you install the Cat5 connectors in the for the boxes. Uh, <clears throat> when you do initiate a rapid shutdown uh, on this device, I believe that you have to actually go to the combiners and shut off boxes and manually reset them after a shutdown. So the combiners, uh, four to sixteen position fused combiners. Uh, so there's a variety of of negative grounded combiners, um, ungrounded combiners, you know, where both positive and negative are, are broken. Um, it's for, you know, grid tie inverters or battery systems, uh, quite a, a variety of, of options there. Pass through shutoff boxes for up to four poles, uh, which would be good for um, you know, a dual MPPT channel uh, grid tie inverter. Uh, NEMA 3R, again, for sloped roofs. Uh, some of them were available also as NEMA 4 enclosures, uh, where you can mount it in pretty much any direction. And they are all aluminum construction. And the combiner, the rapid shutdown part of the combiner is powered by array power. Um, there's also um, power supply um, in the birdhouse, uh, and there's battery backup in the birdhouse, and you have AC power to the birdhouse. So you got lots of different uh, redundant sources of power into these systems to make sure that it's always going to be functional. Now the birdhouse has a, an interesting um, function that uh, when you have um, initiated a rapid shutdown, it has an audio uh, recording in it uh, that tells you uh, the status of the system. It will tell you that there is a rapid shutdown in effect, that it has successfully shut down everything. Um, it will tell you if there is still voltage at the solar array or not, uh, depending on whether it's day or night. And um, so this is, you know, if somebody's doing this, there's no doubt about whether the system has shut down or not. Uh, it also has the auxiliary terminals that you can use to actuate the inverter remote on-off switch so that when you initiate a rapid shutdown, it will also shut down your inverters so that hopefully the inspector won't make you put in the, the big breakers to disconnect the battery circuit. But if you do have to disconnect the battery circuits, they have remote trip breakers. Um, there's uh, array disconnect breakers um, so that you can disconnect at the, you know, the array input to the charge controller end of the circuit. Uh, they also have remote operated disconnect boxes if you need to disconnect at uh, high voltage arrays. And um, they also have the big breakers for disconnecting the battery circuit 
um, that do require a power supply in addition to all the other items. And those power supplies are either 24 or 48 volts, two separate uh, models of, of power supply for that. And additional resources. Uh, webinars are recorded on the YouTube channel. We have Rooftops and Wrenches uh, podcasts, which can be interesting, where we discuss various things. And of course, we have other live training events. And I think I will turn this back over to Hannah now, and we can take some questions. Great. Thanks, Brad. Um, so just to remember, everyone, you can submit those questions through the questions pane on the right-hand side of your screen. And we'll get through as many as possible here before we end the webinar. Um, and don't forget to complete that survey if you do leave the webinar. Um, that survey is your ticket to a copy of the presentation, as well as the NAPSEP certificate and the webinar-only special. So um, very important that you do that. All right. And um, let me go ahead and start with our first question. Let's see. Um, can the Outback RSD be used with midnight uh, charge controllers? Yes, I don't see any reason why you could not use it with a midnight charge controller. Um, you, at this point, you would have redundant uh, arc fault um, devices, and so you, but you can disable the arc fault device in the classic uh, charge controller, uh, and just use the Outback uh, arc fault device on that. All right. Uh, the next question we have. Does um, the Solar Edge Tesla Powerwall system address rapid shutdown? Uh, yes, it does. Um, <clears throat> there's so many safety features in that system uh, that uh, the rapid shutdown is, is very easy. Uh, it's basically if your AC power disappears to the system, um, it shuts everything down. Um, <clears throat> although if you have the, the backup power set up on that, um, I think you would probably have to have, add an actuator um, to do the a rapid shutdown. And I'm not sure exactly how that will work. I, it's something I'll have to uh, research when the time comes that we have to uh, take a look at that. All right. Um, our next question, do you have any ideas about the 2017 NEC impacts? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Um, I think the first thing to consider is that they are going to do something that hasn't been done in the code before, and they are going to have a new rapid shutdown uh, ch chapter, I mean, not chapter, but you know the rapid shutdown is going to be different, and it's going to have a note in there that the new rapid shutdown um, for the 2017 code does not take effect until 2019. That'll give us a couple of years to, for the manufacturers to come up with new products and the like, uh, but it does look like they are going to require a module level shutdown so that there's nothing over 80 volts within the array, and then also the, the, the same uh, shutdown that we have now where it's supposed to be under 30 volts you know, outside of the array, and I think that the area uh, outside the array will end up being closer to the array, you know, like one foot or three feet or something. Um, so that should be interesting. And uh, we have, I have not seen anything on the battery systems for the 2017 code yet. Um, that will be very interesting because apparently it's a whole separate section now and we'll have lots of new requirements. Um, so, but tune in uh, in December. I'll be doing another um, podcast uh, on the 2017 code. Um, assuming that we know something about it by then, or at least more details. All right, and that kind of leads into another question we have here, um, wondering how uh, rapid shutdown works with battery backup. Does the rapid shutdown shut off all the backed up circuits? Well, <clears throat> it depends. The code actually does not require that the backed up circuits be um, disconnected or shut down. It only requires the PV circuits to be shut down. Now, you, some people have interpreted this that 
you know, you have to disconnect the battery circuits also to make the inverters go dead. Uh, but that's not exactly what the code says. Um, and what I'm suggesting is that you use the auxiliary in the rapid shutdown initiation uh, to trigger the on-off, remote on-off switch in the inverters. All these inverters have remote on-off capability. They have little terminals in them. Uh, you sometimes you have to, you know, set a jumper uh, so that you have external control of the inverter. Um, and then when you initiate the rapid shutdown, uh, if you have that connected to the remote on off on the inverter, it will turn the inverter off and that would shut down the AC circuits in the house. Um, the other option, of course, is that you actually just put in the remote operated breakers in the battery circuit, which of course, if you break those, uh, it will shut off the inverter because <laughs> uh, it won't have any power from anywhere. Thanks, Brad. Um, next question we have. Does all rapid shutdown equipment for string inverter require a control wire for the disconnect switch on the roof? Mm, no. I, yes. Uh, they all do have control wires at this point. Um, although the Jin Long system simply has AC power to the shutdown device, so whether you consider that a control wire or not is questionable. Um, it's actually just a circuit to that device and all the controls are within the device. Otherwise, all the others do have um, uh, control wires, what would be considered control wires, you know, 12 volt or 24 volt DC. 24 volt DC seems to be the most common uh, voltage for those control wires, um, you know, powered by a, a, a power supply in or near the inverter. Great. Um, the next question we have, um, do you have a, a cost analysis on the different systems? Do you have a cost recommendation? No, most of the grid tie uh, inverter rapid shutdown s systems are fairly inexpensive. You know, you're talking 200 to $500 for most systems, uh, you know, larger systems, you may have to have a few more rapid shutdown devices. Um, the battery-based systems are somewhat more expensive. Uh, you are going to be looking at probably $1,200 as a minimum and upwards of close to $3,000 uh, for those. Uh, so there is a fairly significant cost impact uh, for this. Um, and hopefully within a few years, uh, there will be a a method of doing this for considerably less cost. Um, when we get to the module level shutdown, it's going to change everything anyway. So hopefully we can, or the manufacturers can figure out how to do this for considerably less cost. And has Outback given you any idea on when AEE will have the ICS Plus rapid shutdown equipment in stock? Um, I believe it should be fairly soon. Um, I haven't looked at that uh, recently, but um, a couple months ago they said it would be a couple months. So it should be soon, I think. All right. And um, the final question here before we wrap up. Does the rapid shutdown negate the UPS function for backup? Well, when you want rapid shutdown, uh, generally it's because things have gone south pretty severely, like your house is on fire. Um, and at that point, you probably don't want power in your house. Uh, so you would probably want the inverter to shut down. You probably do not want UPS uh, capability at that point. Uh, now, if you have a separate UPS system in the house, of course, that's going to continue to power whatever it was connected to. Uh, but the UPS function in, say, an Outback inverter uh, is not going to be any different than this backup function. Um, and you can make it shut down with the, uh, you know, remote on-off switch uh, connected to the initiation device. Great. Thanks, Brad. Um, well, that concludes our okay. Q&A portion of the webinar, everyone. Thanks for all your great questions. And thank all you, right. everybody, for attending. Mm -hmm. Um, so thanks for joining us for our presentation, Rapid Shutdown. Um, next month, we have on August 19th, our next webinar in our monthly webinar series, Off-Grid Wind Power.
So another great technical topic um, that you won't want to miss. And don't forget that you can watch these presentations again on our YouTube channel. Um, our channel is called AEE Solar, and you can find all of our past webinars and other great uh, material and presentations there on the site. Um, so feel free to go and peruse. Um, don't forget to complete that survey. Then I'll send you a copy of the presentation, um, as well as your NAPSEP certificate and a webinar-only special for our AEE Express online store. Um, and as Brad mentioned before, we do have content on our uh, podcasts every month, so Rooftops and Wrenches. You can hear Brad and Brian and Paul all discuss um, various technical topics in the solar industry. So uh, very interesting, very entertaining, a very fun thing to listen to. Um, and we really encourage you to, to check those out. So thanks again, everyone, for um, joining us today, and have a great weekend.